the Pleistocene is a remarkable epoch in the geological calendar of Earth. marked by the appearance of main and great climatic events. It is generally believed that this epoch began around 1.8 million years ago. The Pleistocene was known for its ice ages when many glaciers cover many parts of the earth including the seas. Now come to the point evolution of species. The distinctive features of the Pleistocene are the appearance of oscillations, resulting to glaciations, the formation of huge glaciers on the Earth's surface. The Pleistocene epoch is identified by the occurrence of Villafranquian fossils, namely Bose, Bovine, Icus, Horse, and Elephus, Elephant. In the terrestrial stratigraphy and Calabrian formation of specific marine species, the International Conference of Geologists held in London in 1948 thus commented. Quote, the Commission recommends that, in order to eliminate existing ambiguities, the lower Pleistocene should include as the basal members in the type areas, the basal Calabrian formation marine, together with its terrestrial continental equivalent, the Pilafranchian. Unquote. Glaciation occur differently in different regions depending on latitude, terrain, and climate. There is a general correspondence between glaciers in different regions in higher altitudes and latitudes. Instant snowfall preceded glaciations. Most part of the northern Europe, Great Britain, North America, Switzerland, Scandinavia, and almost all parts of Alps were covered with ice sheets. In the tropical regions, high humidity and very heavy rainfall prevail. Tropical mountains at higher altitudes like Mount Kalimanjaro, Mount Kenya, Rwenjori Range in East and Central Africa. We are also influenced. The instant snowfall in some mountains of these tropical regions made the permanent snow line descend by almost 3500 feet. Now come to another point, effects of climatic oscillation in the Pleistocene. Although the Great Ice Age is generally understood to be a single event, there were however climatic oscillations within it. In general, the Ice Age was marked by the occurrence of intensely cold phases with thick ice coverage known as glacier period intervened by phases of dry and warm periods known as interglacials. Glaciation also consists of phases of advance and retreats, cold stadial and interstadial. According to Rismond and Platon, 1986, 
quote, a major glacial event is a general glacial excursion, term is glacial. Glacials are separated by interglacials. During a glacial, the glacier experiences minor advances and retreat. The minor excursion is a stadium. The time between stadials are interstadials. Unquote. Similarly, the American Commission 1961 defines the fundamental unit of the geologic climatic classification is a glaciation is a climatic episode during which extensive glaciers develop, attain a maximum extent and recede. A stadial or steady is a climatic episode representing a subdivision of a glaciation during which a secondary advance of glacier took place. An interstadial is a climatic episode within which a secondary decision of or stainless steel of glaciers took place. Unquote. Now come to another point glaciation sequence. Glaciation events are defined differently in various regions of the glacial range, which have their own glacial history depending on latitudes terrain and climate. The most widely referred glacial and interglaciation cycle is that recorded in the Alps. These sequences in alpine regions have been identified by two geologists, Pan and Buckner, in 1909. On the basis of their studies of the ancient sedimentary and other deposits or moraines made by glaciers during its sliding movement. Thus, four glacial sequences have been recorded from the Alps. These are the Goons, Mindel, Rees, and Wom, intervened by three interglacials, namely Goons, Mindel, Mindel, Rees, and finally the Rees Wom. Corresponding glacial sequences recorded from the United States of America are. Nebraska, Kansan, Iloinian, and Wisconsin, while the interglacial episodes are Aptonian, Yarmouthian, and Sangamonian, respectively. The Pleistocene has been classified into three phases lower, middle, and upper. The first formal use of the term lower, middle, and upper was done on the Second International Quaternary Association Congress in Leningrad in 1932. Geologists working in the Alps have estimated that the Goons glaciation falls within the lower Pleistocene that began around 1.7 million years ago. The Goons Mindel interglaciation and Mindel glaciation and Mindel Greece interglacials fall within the Middle Pleistocene that began around 4.5 lakh years ago, and finally the Reese glaciation, Reese Worm interglaciation, and the Worm glaciation was reported to occur within the Upper Pleistocene that began around 1 lakh years ago. Some prehistorians prefer naming the different glacial period in the numerical sequence as first glacial period for goons, 
second glacial period for mindering, the third glacial period for reefs, and the warm is the fourth glacial period. Similarly, the interglacials are termed as first, second, and third interglacial periods respectively. Now come to the fluvial stage. As mentioned earlier, the effect of glaciation was noticed in the higher altitudes and latitudes of the earth during Pleistocene. Instant flood and sedimentation occur in the tropical regions of the earth due to high precipitation and humidity. The high precipitation causes the rivers and the stream become saturated with water causing instant spot and sedimentation. Sediment deposits in the form of silt, sand and gravel occur extensively in the flood plains of the rivers in the tropics. These periods of floods are termed as fluvials and the period between the two fluvials are interfluvials. The interfluvial sphere periods of dry and lean season marked by the receding volumes of water in the rivers and water bodies. Whaling, a reputed geologist in 1930 has defined fluvial periods as what? A period of geological significance during which rainfall was in general considerably heavier than the earlier times and then it is today over an area sufficiently large to be of some account of world's events is called a fluvial period. Unquote. Four fluvial periods were traced on the basis of geological evidences in East and South Africa. And these are namely number one, Kageran, number two, Kamasian, number three, Kanjiran, and number four, Gamblian. These fluvials were contemporaneous to the glacial stages, and thus Kageran occur at the time of Goons during the lower Pleistocene, while Kanjiran and Kamasian occur at the time of Mindel and Reese during middle Pleistocene, while the Gamblian occur corresponding to worm during the upper Pleistocene. Now come to continental drift. The deposition of the ice during the glacial period extended to many thousand feet. This is estimated on the basis of the study of current deposition of the ice layers in polar region, according to T. C. Sharma, 1974. The water of the seas and oceans contains to form ice resulting in the sea level to recede by about 400 to 500 feet. As a consequence, the coastal regions in many areas of the earth expanded. Some land areas became submerged, while some areas separated by seas became connected. Thus, the continents of Europe and Africa, now separated by the Gibraltar. We are earlier connected by land bridges. Similarly, Alaska of North America and Siberia of Asia we are connected by land bridges. Such land links between different continents and countries of the world facilitated movement of prehistoric male and animal. 
On the other hand, during interglacial periods, the ice sheets melted to a great extent, and as a result, the level of water in seas and oceans enhanced, which ultimately separated many countries and continents restricting movement of prehistoric men and culture. Now come to another point, glacial eustatic fluctuation and its impact. These changes in the level of ocean water due to the alternating glaciations and deglaciations of the northern hemisphere continents are designated as glacio eustatic fluctuations according to Carl Buzzer 1971. The activities of rivers we are also influenced by the climatic oscillation during the glacial period. During glaciation, since the water condensed to form ice resulting in the volumetric decreases of the river water. On the other hand, during interglacial period, the volume of the river water increased due to melting of ice. Similarly, the rivers were saturated with water in the tropical regions of Earth during pluvial due to high precipitation, causing flood. On the other hand, during interpluvial, due to drier climate, the volumes of river water receded considerably. This fluctuation in the climate affected the degradation and aggradational activities of river leading to the formation of terraces of the river valleys. Four terraces are noticed in some rivers corresponding to the glacial or pluvial stages. The effects of glaciation we are also noticed in the periglacial regions of the world, particularly on the earth surface caused by wind. Their prevailed an intense dry and cold climatic condition in the glaciated regions leading to high velocity wind. The glaciated regions remain barren free of vegetation during the interglacial phases with enough sand and other sediment components. The high velocity wind carried the sand particles and deposited them in the periglacial regions, particularly along the hills or valley slopes. These unstratified sand deposits are termed as lois in geological literature. Traces of fossil remains of prehistoric human and animals, including Paleolithic cultural remains, are also found sometimes in the loisic deposits. Now come to another point, Pleistocene flora and fauna. The flora and fauna of the Pleistocene were different from date of today, as indicated by fossil evidences from different parts of the world. In Siberia, animals like woolly mammoth, woolly rhinoceros, reindeer, cap lion, etc existed. These animals could adapt themselves to the adverse 
climatic condition that prevail during the Pleistocene. The dominant faunal species of North America were the proboscideans, Colombian mammoth, imperial mammoth, and mastodons, besides short faced bear, severed toothed cat, American lion, and the dire wolf. The varieties of flora that existed during the Pleistocene also corresponded to the climate. Thus, in Britain, during the Ice Ages, the plants varied according to climate. In general, during the warm periods, Britain was covered with forests made up of both deciduous and coniferous trees while during the cold periods it was covered with short grasses, mosses, and lichens. Next come to another point, impact of climatic changes on the flora and fauna. The severe climatic changes during the ice age had major impacts on the fauna and flora. With its advance of the ice, Large areas of continents became totally depopulated, and the plants and animals retreating southward in front of the advancing glacier faced tremendous stress. The most severe stress resulted from the drastic climatic change, reduced living space, and curtail food supply, and consequently. During the end of the Pleistocene, several animals, including the mastodons and mammoths, became extinct. The most remarkable event of the Pleistocene was the evolution of man in the earth, and this is corroborated by the fossil findings from different parts of the world. All the major stages of human for example, Neanderthal men, besides modern men, evolved during this period. The Neanderthal men who evolved in the European countries is known to have adapted initially itself to the cold climatic condition of the Pleistocene, but consequently it could not thrive long against the adverse climatic condition and became extinct. Now come to the concluding part. The Pleistocene thus became a defining period in the geologic era because of the deep impact it made in the evolution of Earth through its climatic changes. These climatic changes literally brought different parts of the world closer or widened the gap between them. It also witnessed the alteration of the physical package of the earth. The most significant change was the evolution of man.